humanity has a proclivity towards corruption when not held to account. Historically, politicians, tyrants, dictators, and rulers. to evil side of power. Yes, I guess that sounds, I mean, that's Film, book, play, TV show, newspaper article. So, blah, blah. Power, I mean, any, like, any superhero or supervillain is the epitome of this. I mean, the, the famous quote, the famous quote in Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility and then we've even seen that even though that was from the first movie we really saw that come into being with Doc Ock is that Spider-Man 2? with Doc Ock um, becoming corrupt with his power, but super, any, you can look at any superhero versus supervillain, any superhero, um, the role that the superhero plays against the supervillain, and how supervillains use their powers, they're corrupted by their power, <laughs> turned to a life crime, um, what other stuff outside of that genre? Book, play, TV show. Breaking Bad would be a pretty good Shows the downward spiral of Walter White. Oh, 
And this is not outside of what I was already talking about with Karakta. Potentially being a frail, being a frail villain. Before he succumbs to mortality. That's exactly what Walter White was trying to provide, trying to um, deal with his own mortality. Wanted to provide for his family. So there's that parallel there, which is interesting. So Karakta could be a Walter White style big bad evil guy. I mean, if we think back, if you remember, gosh, yeah, Raceland from Dragonlance was was incredibly frail. And once he found that he achieved power, bitterness overcame this, had already poisoned his heart. Strangely enough, <clears throat> well, Raceland, though, Raceland was an interesting, Raceland was an interesting choice because he was corrupted by power, but he did good things not because he was good, but because he wanted to be able to fill that void that he helped clear. He wanted to become... He wanted to become a deity, a god, and he ultimately did. But he was working with all the forces of good, knowing that this power void would be left in his wake, in their wake. And he basically used them to achieve his own goals. He just happened to do good in the process. His only... His Achilles heel, his only Achilles heel was his brother, his love for his brother. So is that... What can I do differently? <clears throat> well, Ark Terra is a new world and I use that term as in 
meaning it is a bit naive. It has existed for so long without arcane magic. presence of arcane magic that it has almost forgotten its raw power. So what this means is how is this different? Um, while evil still exists in the world, the scale of the evil that Dark uh, represents is outside of outside of the scope of humanity. Basically, when this happens, I mean, it's going to be, they're just kind of going through life, and all of a sudden, they hit this wall of, wall of evil, and it's going to be overwhelming. They won't even comprehend it at first. What is it like the old, the stories of? Yeah. Okay. Um, when this evil is first met, it will be beyond their comprehension. I think uh, there was a story, a story of when, th and this is kind of funny too because this is where the whole theme is, when America was first discovered, the indigenous Spell the word. These people could not even see the ships in the ocean because they were something that were so knew they could incredibly profound is that the right word that they were outside scope of their reality. So that was the story that the ships were that when the ships first came to America, Indians didn't couldn't even see the ships in 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 the ocean. Um, I can even find 
Koreans could not see ships in the ocean. Is it true that Native Americans couldn't perceive, see the ships of Columbus's fleet because they couldn't comprehend them? Um, there's some interesting sensory processing research deciding what our eyes and ears are reporting that, su that suggests that we just ignore and mislabel the unknown or unexpected. As an artist, I think that's hogwash. People have always been able to see quite clearly and draw piano from their animals, point, point, blah, 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 blah. I mean, this was a myth. So I guess we should accurately call it that. Think of the myth of when America's first discovered the dish. People cannot even see the ships in the ocean because they were so, they were so incredibly profound that they were outside the scope of the reality. None of this can be scientifically proven, but the premise makes for... Hi, Reborn. Welcome, welcome. Pardon me while I muddle through all this. But the premise makes for an interesting... Investigation adventure. Okay. So What do we know? What do we have now? The sentence from which to build on. Kerkta wants to usher in a new, mag new age of magic before he succumbs to mortality and is having difficulty getting it. Having difficulty getting it using necromancy because arcane magic is scarce. Scarce. Yeah, I guess that's the right that's the right word for now. Arctera is a world where arcane magic once destroyed mo most life on the planet during a cataclysmic event. Um, I have a name for this. I'm calling it during the arcanaclysm. I'll leave this in parentheses so it goes without. Uh, a dozen centuries later, the world is beginning to reimagine and reinvent itself. A recently discovered continent brings new hope and new dreams to the population of the homeland. Named to be. How did you like it? How was your first uh, your first first venture? stream still going okay oh uh, yeah you know <laughs> it went off the rails that will happen that can happen a lot 
I've been doing it for... I started playing when I was nine. I am now 51. Can't get it out of my system, man. It is there. And, uh... Yeah, man, just just have fun with it. Start, you know, kind of investigating different... Uh, I'm glad you found a group you could could play with. Yeah, man, nothing to be scared about. Everybody kind of has that going in a little bit. Um, a little bit of anxiety because you're kind of doing something... You know, at first you're doing something new, but also you're kind of... You're putting yourself out there a little bit because you're... Sometimes, you know, we want to escape reality and we want to do things that we can't do in real life. So those are, you know, we call them, those are fantasies, right? So you're kind of exploring things that you might not otherwise be comfortable exploring with. And sometimes if you're doing that with a group around the table, that especially if you haven't met them before, if it's a new group, it can be a little... But they're doing the same thing. Just remember that they're just all hanging out and wanting to have fun too. They're in the same boat as you or were at some point. So just let that part go and just start just start exploring and, and brainstorming. You'll get used to that. You'll get used to it. You just kind of put yourself, just kind of take yourself out of your own head and put someone else's brain in there, that your character's brain in there and kind of let it, just let it flow. Think of it as, um, you know, when you're reading books and you're, you are able to kind of put yourselves in the shoes of the different characters or even watching a TV show or a good movie. Um, I recommend watching good shows that have character development um, to kind of get and then just kind of put yourself in the place of those characters and how would you you know how would how would you react if you were that character not as you but as your character that would you do the same thing as them if you had those same thoughts is you know as that character or what decisions would you make or but yeah it gives you you know it's uh It's a, it's a new thing, but man, just kind of, just let it, let it, uh, let it wash over you. Just break out your imagination and start practicing and read some books or watch some fantasy. Get some ideas of what kind of characters you might want to play. What kind of, um, what kind of topics you might want to start exploring as far as that, that goes and. Personally, my favorite characters to play are um, like clerics and paladins because um, they have, outside of the um, relationships that your characters have with each other, just the friendships or the, you also have this relationship with this deity that um, goes beyond those relationships. So you're kind of expanding even beyond the relationships that you might have with the PCs or even the NPCs, even the conversations. You also have this relationship. Um, oh, man, there's no reason why you can't have more than one of, of a class. You could go the cleric route, too. You could be a devout cleric, but there's no reason why you couldn't. Paladins, especially, can be completely different, and... To be honest, man, I don't know how new the group is, but one of the best campaigns I ever ran, the whole, I, from the beginning, it, they were reluctant to do this. I mean, everybody had to be a human fighter. That was it. There was no other class anybody could be or no other race anyone could be. And at first they were reluctant, but then once they started playing, you started seeing such diverse Dif you know, such huge differences between the characters. They were so focused on the role playing and making their character different, they didn't care about the mechanics part of it. All that kind of stuff went away. So, 
that would be my recommendation is just kind of go with what you want to do and what you want to explore and the mechanics part that's it's i mean yeah the rules are important but don't let it get in the way of something that you want to do yeah man because yeah paladins and clerics you have this other relationship with this deity that you're there's this contract you have with them that you're you know also trying to fulfill um it's such a cool concept that's really hard to um parallel in real life that's kind of why they um kind of why we role play right we, so we can do these things but it also it's just a different different exploration i don't know it doesn't even matter if you're religious or not i'm not particularly religious rogues are fun too <sighs> yeah backgrounds you'll get used to that too don't um i would even you could even go so far as to like look up some or watch some um um there's a lot of good youtube videos out there that show you how to make good backgrounds but yeah it's you kind of one of the it's kind of hard to fall into that trap because tropes are are so hard to you know things are cliche for a reason right i mean things are cliche because they're common and they become stereotypes so yeah especially but rogues rogues have such a diverse um reasoning for being your your rogue doesn't even have to be a thief it doesn't have to be you could be a, a bandit or you could be just someone that an urchin that's just struggling to get by on you know living day to day trying to just stay alive it doesn't even have to be about you know picking locks and disarming traps so um i but i don't again it's hard to not knowing the group i don't know what that group uh yep that's a there's nothing wrong with that That actually sounds good yeah exactly yeah just build on that idea one of the things I do is and even in world building I'll do this I'll I'll just like close my eyes and then imagine opening my eyes and just what do I see what do I if I wake up in the morning in as this character what do I see what does my room look like what is my you know what are what's on my you know do I have a side table what's on my side table just kind of answer those questions to yourself um and then you know what's do i have like what clothes do i have hanging on the on the hook when i open the door to the outside what do i see or what does my kitchen look like what food is in there those little things and then you know yeah what happens when you look outside and open the door and what does the street look like or um you know things like that if you're uh if you're on the run you might have you might have just kind of been going town to town picking up odd jobs along the way until you felt until you didn't feel safe anymore or you felt you probably always don't feel safe so you're probably always looking over your shoulder but at some point you have to weigh the risk versus reward you've probably your character's probably come a bit paranoid so yeah you'd have to um 